Today we will start with a new topic uh, thin film dynamics. Now uh, this topic has a bit of relationship with the lubrication theory that we had learnt earlier. Uh, in the lubrication theory that we had learnt, we discussed about a narrow gap in which there is a fluid driven by some force and the length scales could be separated in such a way that the gap height is much much smaller as compared to the axial length scale and the gap height could be varying with position and uh, that uh, however, uh, the variation in the gap height, uh, gap height is such that the gap height by the length scale, the average or the length scale representing the gap height divided by the axial length scale that remains small under all circumstances. So, that was the condition that we, uh, we considered and thin film dynamics as we see here also deals with flows of very thin films whose height is very, very much smaller than the length. But the difference between the thin film flows and the kind of situations that we addressed through lubrication theory earlier is that there both the boundaries were rigid. Now here there is a free surface that we are talking about which is the surface the interface between the liquid and say another medium which may be a gaseous medium. So, uh, this thin film dynamics is essentially talking about free surface flows where thin film thin liquid films are formed and uh, uh, of course, we can use lubrication theory in this context as well, but uh, the context in which we use lubrication theory earlier the difference between that and this is that there we talked about a rigid boundary at the top and here we will be considering a free thin film surface at the top. So, uh, one can easily infer that I mean except for this difference, but this is a big difference and we will see that what is the implication of this big difference, but except for this big difference one can easily infer that flow of fluid in a thin film will have good resemblances with lubrication flows that is uh, flow in uh, slide for example, flow uh, through slider bearings for example. In thin film flows also the velocity in one direction dominates over the other that, that is there is a dominant direction of flow that is if you recall that in lubrication theory we had the velocity scales u c and v c along x and y where u c is much much greater than v c. So, here also the same thing will hold true that means, although there are the possibilities of having both components of velocity, but one component of velocity dominates significantly over the other. But there are some subtle differences between thin film dynamics and lubrication theory. In lubrication typi typically in lubrication I mean it is we should not say that the difference between thin film dynamics and lubrication theory, but better to say thin film dynamics and situations pertaining to lubrication because lubrication theory is a theory which can be used even in thin film dynamics just the boundary conditions change. Uh, but uh, in typically in lubrication the flow is bounded on both sides by solid walls. Therefore, at both the walls the fluid satisfies the no slip boundary condition. In lubrication theory usually height of the fluid or channel is known as a function of time or space. In thin film dynamics one of the surfaces is usually a free surface as we have pointed out. Therefore, instead of no slip boundary condition the fluid satisfies uh, the no shear boundary condition. We discussed about this boundary condition earlier and we will see that how that we can fit that in the context of lubrication theory. Apart from this the film height is in general not known. This is also a very important thing that uh, like when we are talking about say lubrication in, in say slider bearings, we know the height of the confinement it is, it is already given, but in thin films for example, let us say a droplet spreading on a substrate. So, there 
if you consider the height of the droplet being a function of time that evolves with position and time in such a way which is not known a priori. So, uh, this is uh, an important challenge in the lubrication uh, in the thin film dynamics. Therefore, one has to look into additional boundary conditions and these additional boundary conditions we will discuss in great details which are known as the kinematic boundary condition and normal stress boundary condition. Now, in what follows we will discuss the thin film dynamics in much the same way as we did for the lubrication theory. Therefore, some algebra which we worked out in details for the lubrication theory we will omit detailed discussions and we have uh, uh, since we have already done uh, those discussions in the lubrication theory and we will straight away use the expressions, but wherever possible and, and wherever the algebra is simple enough I will uh, try to derive that for your recapitulation. Now, uh, to understand the thin film theory, we will start with the very special case of the thin film theory when the film surface is flat. Okay. So, uh, let us try to consider a situation. Let us say there is an inclined plane making an angle theta with the horizontal and there is a thin liquid film on the top of it. We can uh, for simplicity we are assuming that this film thickness H naught is a constant. This is not true for a general thin film and we will see that if it deviates from a constant that it if it evolves spatio temporally then how to take that in the mathematical formulation. But we will first begin with a simple case just to get some essential idea that what is the situation if this film is flat and uh, let us say that this is the direction of G. We can set up the x and y axis x dash y dash dash for the dimensional system and without dash the dimensionless system. So, let us write the governing equations. For low Reynolds number we can neglect the inertial terms and we can straight away write first the continuity equation. assuming two dimensional incompressible flow x momentum zero is equal to plus now there will be a body force. What is the body force along x dash? 
rho g sin theta. y momentum What is the body force for the y momentum? Minus rho g cos theta. Now, as you see here, uh, we can easily extract the leading order terms from these equations for the situation when the y length scale is much much less than the x length scale. So then which of the terms will remain? So this term will remain, then out of these two terms this term will remain and this term will remain. Out of these terms here this term will remain and this term will remain. The V effect will be much much less as compared to the U effect. So, it will be possible to solve this system of equations. However, we will not make an attempt to solve this system of equations at this stage, but we will think of what are the appropriate boundary conditions that is can we close the system of equations. So, to understand that uh, okay, before going to that let us uh, summarize the various equations. Now, in this slide we have not used the dash for uh, the dimension, uh, dimensional uh, parameters just for simplicity. So, you can see that these equations which uh, I have derived in the board just now, these equations are summarized here. So, uh, important consideration is that H naught much much less than L c, that means we have del del x much much less than del del y and del square del x square much much less than del square del y square and V is much much less than u. Further, inertial effects are negligible since the film is very thin. So, that the left hand side of the Navier-Stokes equation, uh, the left hand side is neglected. So, uh, uh, you can see the summary of the three equations and these equations contain u, v and p, I mean uh, either in a dimensional form or in a dimensionless form, I mean, uh, but you require their boundary conditions. So, what will be the boundary conditions for uh, at the bottom wall and at the top wall. So, we will look into that. So, uh, at the bottom wall at y dash equal to 0, what are the boundary conditions? u dash equal to 0 that is no slip and v dash equal to 0 that is no penetration. This boundary condition is true at y dash equal to 0, what about y dash equal to h naught? Let us say to generalize, now we have understood that you can apply a surface tension gradient to modulate a flow. Let us say that you have applied a surface tension gradient. So, if you apply a surface tension gradient, how can you apply a surface tension gradient in the previous 
class we had learned that that uh, it is possible to apply a temperature gradient or a concentration gradient to create a surface tension gradient. Let us say that you have applied a surface or you have created a surface tension gradient along x dash. So then we can write that the tau which is there at the free surface is equal to d sigma dx dash. We have pr proved this in the previous lecture and we will uh, briefly recapitulate how that is possible. So again uh, like in, in, in this slide we have uh, omitted the dash. So uh, this uh, uh, is, uh, is just a representation without dash but these are dimensional parameters. So you can see that we have taken a small element and on this side you have sigma, on this side you have sigma plus d sigma and the stress, the tangential stress acting on the dx is tau xy. So if you make a balance then tau xy is equal to d sigma dx, okay. This we proved earlier, I am not going to spend much time on this. Now the question is that when you say that tau xy is equal to d sigma dx, what are the basic assumptions? There are quite a few assumptions, but one of the most important assumptions is that the film is flat, okay. So that means this free surface which is the interface between the uh, white colored background slide and the blue, blue colored uh, thin film that interfacial region that is the surface which demarcates the two regions that is a flat surface. But as we just discussed that there is no necessity, there is no guarantee that this surface will be a flat surface. So if the interface is bent or deformed which is almost always likely to happen. So to understand that we will try to look into the tensorial form of the previous description where the tangential direction is not along x but the tangential direction. So let us uh, represent that in the figure. So if you have a curved interface like this where the h local h is a function of x and t. Then you have directions s and n, unit tangent vector and unit normal vector. Okay. So the s takes the role of x now. Whatever was the role of x for a flat surface, that role is now taken up by s. So now we can write, so previously what we could write? We could write that tau is equal to d sigma dx. Instead of that, now we will write that the tangential component of the stress is same as the gradient of sigma along the x di s direction, s, right, not x, along the s direction. So how will you mathematically write this? So you can write by invoking the, you can write it by invoking the traction vector. So let me erase this.
So, we had seen earlier that the traction vector that is the force per unit area for at a point where the direction normal is n, its ith component is tau ij nj. So, we will not give the vector here because we are writing with in index notation. So, in tensorial notation this can be thought of as just like this is the stress and this is the normal vector, this is the traction vector. So, the same things represented in tensorial notation. Okay. Now, sometimes I mean, uh, I mean the notations are different at different sometimes it, it is given a notation like this, but commonly in books like in, in, in tensorial notation I mean uh, you just use bold faces to represent this. So, in the slides that I will be showing these tensorial quantities are shown by bold letters. So, in the board I will use some arbitrary notation I mean because different books use different notation, but in the slides that I will be showing I will be using bold notation to represent this. So, now this n may be uh, we can show with a cap sometimes unit vector is shown with a cap I mean different books just use different notations. Its tangential component is this is equal to this is what this is a gradient along the direction s grad s ok. So, x d d sigma d x is replaced by this operator. So, how will this operator look? How will the grad s operator look? So, to uh, understand that let us say let us think of an acceleration vector uh, or, or any vector a not acceleration just any vector a. So, a is it is not vector sum of the normal component plus the tangential component any vector a. So, a s is equal to a minus a n this you can write a minus a n you can write n dot a what is n dot a? n dot a is the normal component of a, n is the unit normal vector and that times the unit vector along the normal direction is the a n vector right. So, with this similarity you can write del s is equal to del minus n dot del n. just replace a with del. So, 
Okay. So, we will uh, summarize this discussion through the next slide, general shear stress boundary condition. So, here we are talking about the gradient of surface tension for which we use an operator which is called as surface gradient. So, for the surface gradient this operator has a symbol del S which is equal to del minus n dot del n. Okay. So, you can write uh, the traction vector dot S is equal to del S sigma dot S, what we wrote, wrote in the board. So, that is equation number 13 in the slide, you can see that this we have already derived. Now, this equation what is written here? Uh, of course, we have to keep in mind that uh, like if, if these are dimensional parameters all these will be tau dash, sigma dash, n dash and s dash and n and n s are the same. So, uh, that is not highlighted, but these are actually tau dash, del dash, sigma dash. Now, from here one has to derive suitable equations which are representatives of this equation under the assumptions of lubrication theory. That will be somewhat simplified versions of this. This is the general one. So, for example, if you are simulating the, the tangential stress boundary condition for a problem in CFD, this is the boundary condition that you will use. Now, uh, uh, a little bit of simplification with neglect, neglecting the sum of the small terms will result in a lubrication theory version of this equation. We will take that up subsequently. So, uh, now the question is just like we have one u, we also have one v, right. If it is not a fully developed flow, v is not identically equal to 0. So, there must be a boundary condition for v and for the and the boundary condition for v when the interface. So, if you see if there is a flat film at steady state v is equal to 0 at the top surface, right. However, if the interface is moving upwards with time that is the film height is changing with time then V is equal to dH dt, right. This is straightforward, but this is a special case that V is equal to dH dt when the film is flat. But what happens when the interface is deformed and moving or changing with time? So, for that we will use a boundary condition which is called as kinematic boundary condition. The kinematic boundary condition is essentially a generalization of the no penetration boundary condition. So, what is the physical meaning of the kinematic boundary condition? We will first write what is the kinematic boundary condition and then uh, we will uh, give a physical interpretation to the boundary condition. This is a very, very important boundary condition and we should learn this very carefully. So, let us say that we have a function f is equal to y minus h x t, h x t is the height of the interface as a function of position and time. Now, 
Now, the kinematic boundary condition says that any fluid particle located at an interface must stay at the interface at all times. Any particle, any particle means fluid particle, any fluid particle located on the interface must be there on the interface at all times. That means, the total derivative of f with respect to t must be 0. This is the kinematic boundary condition. So, total derivative of f means del f del t f is a scalar. So, Now, we can write an alternative form of this by noting that what is grad f, what is can you tell what is the direction of grad f? Direction of grad f is normal to the surface f, right? That is the maximum rate of change of f, that is along the normal direction of f. So, if we divide grad f by its magnitude, we will get the unit normal vector n. So, if we divide by mod of grad f both sides, then this will be n. This boundary condition is called as no penetration boundary condition, uh, uh, sorry kinematic boundary condition and its special form of and the special form of this kinematic boundary condition is the no penetration boundary condition. So, you can clearly see that at a given location, if f is not changing with time, this term will become 0 and this is like the normal component of v is equal to 0, then that is the kind of, uh, no penetration boundary condition. Okay. Let us go to the next slide. So, we had made some intuitive derivation, again I am uh, uh, like uh, giving you a remark that ideally uh, we should have put the dash for all the terms since we had used the uh, dimensional forms not yet the non dimensional forms, but just for the easiness of writing uh, we have avoided the dash and we have just written the so all these equations without dash, but if you are very particular please use a dash when you convert this to your notes. So, uh, uh, the x momentum, y momentum continuity equation, the boundary conditions, the bottom plate u equal to v equal to 0, free surface, two boundary conditions, one is the kinematic condition and another is the shear stress balance. Now, a special form of this for flat surface is v is equal to dh dt and tau x y is equal to d sigma d x. Okay. So, uh, this like the general form implies the special form for flat surface and the equation of the film surface is f that is y minus h x t equal to 0 and for a flat surface it is y minus h 0 equal to 0 that means y is equal to h 0 right that is the equation of the flat surface, but equation of the curved surface which is evolving with time is equal to y is equal to h x t. Okay. Now, what is missing here? 
So, instead of uh, going through the slide which is a bit heavy, we will try to understand this through common logic. So, let us come back to the previous slide maybe that will help. How many governing equations are here? Three governing equations are here, right? How many unknowns are here? So, very common unknowns which are straight away apparent are u, v and p, right. Now, there is another unknown which is a subtle unknown, what is that? No, 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 theta is like that is uh, the inclination of the plane. Uh, right so so that is that is known of course i mean you have a inclined plane and you do not know the inclination of the inclined plane then you 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 cannot set up the problem h h is not known h as a function of x and t that is not known so now you see that actually there are four unknowns now you can see here is that there are now out these four unknowns, but each equation for, for getting each unknown you will require boundary conditions. For getting u how many boundary conditions you require? Two boundary conditions. For getting uh, p from the y momentum equation how many boundary conditions you require? One because it is a first order equation and the continuity equation is also a first order equation. So, you will require one boundary condition. So, total four boundary conditions are necessary to close the system, right. So, you have 1, 2, 3, 4. So, system appears to be closed, but the problem is that H itself is unknown. So, you require one additional constraint to constrain h to give the variation of h and that constraint we will now look into. So, the condition or, or equation that is missing would give an equation for the film thickness. So, why that equation for the film for the film thickness was necessary that leaving the film thickness apart, leaving the film thickness thickness apart we had how many we had the x momentum equation for which there are two boundary conditions y momentum one boundary condition and the continuity equation one boundary condition. So, these were requiring four boundary conditions which were prescribed, but that would have closed the system provided h is a constant, but h if h is, a, h is not a constant you require additional constraint and that will then make it a fully well posed problem. So, for that we will require a condition which is called as the normal stress balance condition. So, we will come to the board to explain that. So, when you have an interface, we have discussed about the tangential stress balance earlier, but what about the normal stress? When you have a curved surface, so you have let us say this is S and uh, this is the this is den denoted not S, we will use a different subscript, no subscript. Let us say here the pressure is P and here the pressure is P air, on this side there is liquid, on this side there is air. So, P minus P air, this is the pressure difference, this is the equivalent normal pressure difference in form of normal stress. If the fluid is at rest, if the fluid is moving, 
if the fluid is deforming let us say that a liquid droplet that is spreading on a sub substrate. Then there is a normal viscous stress also that comes into the picture. So what is the normal viscous stress? So this is what the traction vector, this is nothing but the Cauchy's theorem, right. So this is very important whenever we write the pressure difference in terms of surface tension, sometimes we omit this even on the dynamic conditions because we will see that in lubrication approximation this may be one order less as compared to this or whenever the droplet is in static condition then this does not play a role. This tau is tau viscous that is the tau deviatoric. Okay. So why this is minus sign because the normal positive normal stress is opposite to positive pressure positive pressure is normal inwards and positive normal stress is normal up outwards. So this is equal to what? Sigma by R. Again like if you are interested to write the dimensional and all these things better write the dash. Yeah. Hmm? Shear stress anyway tau has to be tau deviatoric, right? I mean, even if you take the high, I mean, if, even if you consider include the hydrostatic part, hydrostatic part cannot generate a shear, right? So shear stress has that is what I I made this important remark earlier also that when you are talking about shear stress, you are conscious that you are talking about the deviatoric stress. Whenever you are talking about normal stress, you are not always conscious that viscous effects can also give rise to normal stress because normal intuition is that only pressure is giving rise to normal stress which is not a correct intuition. Okay. So this boundary condition closes the system of equations. So we will look into some consequences of this boundary condition. Once we evaluate the pressure, we can get an equation for the interface shape by combining the previous equations 15 and 16. That should theoretically complete our problem. Now the question is that you can close this system of equation without this normal stress balance for a flat film and the reason is quite obvious that for a flat film for a flat surface what is the radius of curvature? The radius of curvature is infinity. Okay. So radius of curvature is infinity means 1 by r equal to 0. So that means you have p dash equal to p dash air. If, if uh, you are not concerned about the deviatoric stress just as a simple case in, in the y direction you have p dash equal to p dash here the normal direction becomes the y direction. Not only in thin film problems but in any other fluid mechanics problem where the interface shape and position is not known this same procedure is applied. So this is a so this procedure that I outlined so two important boundary conditions for a curved surface one is the tangential stress balance another is the normal stress balance. What is the origin of this normal stress balance? See this is nothing but this delta P equal to sigma into 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. That particular formula we have applied here. Now the delta P is augmented by the 
normal deviatory component because it is under dynamic condition. Now, in what follows we will rederive the thin film equation. So, we have derived the e equations without referring to the scales that is without referring to uh, the parameter epsilon which is the ratio of the length scale in the y direction y dash direction as compared to the length scale in the x dash direction. So, we have not used that as a parameter so far. So, we have described the equations, but we will now introduce that as a parameter. So, to do that see now in this slide uh, we have used the prime notation because we will first write the dashed quantities that is the dimensional quantities and then suitably derive its non dimensional form. So, to recapitulate see the basic difference between the rigid surface and the fi thin film problem is that this blue surface it is now it is not a rigid surface it is a free surface. It is evolving with position and time typical length scales. So, epsilon is equal to h naught by L 0 what is h naught? h naught is a typical film thickness. Now, you can say that the if the film thickness varies significantly then I mean a typical film thickness has no meaning because a, I mean say you have taken this as a h naught, but somewhere it is the film thickness is 100 times h naught then that also becomes a typical film thickness. So, you can take any film thickness as the characteristic length scale along y provided that the thin thickness along y is slowly varying that is the variation is not significant. Okay. So, that thin thickness divided by L c is the uh, small parameter epsilon and that small parameter is much much less than 1. So, now uh, to summarize the boundary condition. So, we uh, uh, so you this is a general problem not really a thin film problem, but if you have a general problem. So, we have put this slide because you know this understanding you can apply not just for problems of thin films, but any two phase flow problem that you are solving. So, uh, these boundary conditions uh, have to be satisfied and this is the general form of the governing differential equation we have retained the inertial terms also. But you know for thin film with lubrication approximations many of these terms will not be important. So, uh, a recapitulation of the various scales. So, u prime is of the order of u c this is this is exact recapitulation of what we did for the lubrication theory. I mean we will reproduce some of these uh, uh, just just so that you, I mean you can refresh your memory we will reproduce the derivations of some of this, but instead of doing an elaborate derivation we will quickly do some do some smart back of the envelope calculations to uh, make this derivation. So, for example, u prime is equal to u prime is of the order of u c v prime is of the order of v c which is epsilon u c where from this comes continuity equation very good. P prime is of the order of P c which is mu u c by epsilon square L c. Say you have forgotten this formula suddenly. So, how will you re retrieve this very quickly? <coughs> so, how do you get the pressure scale? So, let us write the x momentum equation with the dominant terms. So, how will you get the dominant terms in the equation you substitute u equal to u 0 plus epsilon u 1 plus epsilon square u 2 p equal to p 0 plus epsilon p 1 plus epsilon square p 2 like that out of that whatever is the leading order terms you collect. So, that comes from mathematics, but your physical intuition tells that certain terms which should be dominating that must be present in the x momentum. So, what are the dominating terms? zero is equal to the pressure gradient along x is one of the dominating terms v 
then out of the two viscous stresses uh, components, one is del square u del x square, another is del square u del y square. Y length scale being much smaller than the x length scale, the del square u del y square should be the dominant, right. So, instead of writing all the epsilon and all those things, you can simply write the dominant term. plus now the body force term. In the lubrication theory discussion that we made earlier, this body force term we just kept as general. If you recall, we kept f x prime f y prime without referring what they are. Now, we have the gravity as the body force in, in the special problem that we are considering for thin films. So, rho g sin theta right, uh, there is a mu here, mu has to be there ok. Now, this term is what minus p c by x c, x c means l c. del p del x, this is what mu u c by h 0 square del 2 u del y 2 and this is rho g sin theta as it is, right. So, we have non dimensionalized with suitable physical scales such that these are of the order of 1. That means, if the pressure gradient is competing with the viscous that gives the scale P c. So, P c is equal to mu u c l c by h naught square. h naught square is epsilon square l c square, right. So, you have mu u c by epsilon square l c ok. So, now you can write this equation in a dimensionless form is equal to 0 is equal to. So, multiply all the terms by l c by p c. So, the first term becomes minus del p del x. second term will become del square u del y square because this is p c by l c. So, L multiplying this by l c by p c will make it 1. So, plus rho g sin theta into l c by p c. Okay. So, this is the dimensionless form of the x momentum equation. We have essentially multiplied all the terms in the dimensional form by L c by P c. All right. Is it all right? Or there is L c by P c, yes, ok. So, uh, similar thing we can do for the y momentum equation. So, for the y momentum equation, let us write the dimensionless uh, uh, dimensional form. So, y momentum 0 is equal to what is the leading order term? The v terms are much smaller than the e corresponding u terms. So, pressure term being uh, important, 
the V terms being much less than the U term, the V terms will be much less important as compared to the pressure terms. So, minus rho G cos theta will be there, this will be P dash Y dash. Okay. So, this you can write as 0 is equal to minus P C by H 0 del P del Y minus rho G cos theta, because P scale is P C and Y scale is H 0. So, P C is so, multiply both the terms by what? H0 by Pc. So, 0 is equal to minus del P del Y minus rho G cos theta into H0 epsilon square LC by mu UC. This is H0 by Pc. What is H0? epsilon into L c. So, this becomes zero is equal to minus del P del Y minus rho G cos theta into epsilon cube L c square by mu u c. Okay. So, we have simplified the x and y momentum equations considering the lubrication approximation and we will take it up from here in the next lecture. Thank you very much.